Hey everybody, it's Kurt Thompson at TrumpetSizzle.com and I have a special guest with me today. I don't often record my trumpet lessons, but in this case I decided that I wanted to. Just because you guys know that most of my students tend to be boys, teenage boys, young men in their 20s, middle-aged guys in their 30s and 40s, and even old-timers way up into their 60s and 70s. And, but every now and then I'll have a female um, student and I have one today and I actually offered a little bit of a discount on the lesson if she would let me record part of the lesson and that's what we're going to do today. Her name is Julie. Welcome Julie to the, the fun and all the excitement of being on TrumpetSizzle.com and something special about Julie is that she's actually almost a pure beginner. I say almost a pure beginner because she did inform me that Many years, not many years ago, I guess um, six or seven years ago, she was in band for one year. Is that right, Julie? Yes. Okay. Seventh grade or eighth grade? Seventh grade. Seventh grade. Yes. So let me get my bearings on this. So you, what actually got you to want to take band in seventh grade? That would be one question. And the second question is, what, does, what made you decide to drop out after just one year? Well, my dad, he's a musician. Well, he was a musician. Um, and so he inspired me to get into music. But um, after that, I I was more focused on two sports. And so I dropped, ah. out of, I dropped out of band to join volleyball and the track team. Ooh, volleyball and track. Those, yes. those are very fun. What would you do in track? I ran the um, 100 meter dash oh, and man. I did the hurdles. You were a sprinter. Yes. Woo. What was your best time in the 100 meter? Um, I don't really remember, but um, I was one of the top. I, I think I got into like third place, third place. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. Okay, I can understand that. Um, I actually had, had the reverse experience. I actually played football from fifth grade until ninth grade. Mm -hmm. But when I got into ninth grade, about that time, my height had shot up to about 5'10 to 5'11. And I weighed about 130 pounds. So I was, a, I was like a walking toothpick. And by the time I got into ninth grade, I was constantly getting hurt really bad in football mm -hmm. by these bigger guys that developed yeah. a lot. Um, a lot more muscles than I did. Mm -hmm. So I did the sports thing first and then just out of pain and torture and getting hurt all the time, I decided to go more with trumpet. Okay. <laughs> so we kind of have the, the opposite story. Okay, now here's what I know about band because I'm a band director, a top band. A band director is kind of a manager because you have so many different kids in the group playing different instruments. Mm -hmm. And you have a limited amount of time, like 45 minutes to an hour. So here's what I know that would probably happen to you. If you were in band, likely there were other kids in the band. They also played different instruments, right? Yes, they did. Mm -hmm. Clarinet, flute, possibly, drums, trombone, saxophone. But you might have had only one band director, or if you were a huge school, you might have had a band director and an assistant. But my point is, you probably didn't get a lot of individualized attention with someone helping you out and all the mechanics and the the basic tenets of this instrument. Would that be a fair assessment? No, um, it's, we usually just had one band director and like you said, it was a short period of time for um, that he taught us. And it was like pressure because we had a certain period of time and we couldn't focus really because like if we didn't know at that time, then you just had to go to your next class and that's it, that was it. You failed and yeah. Excellent, Julie. That's exactly what happened to me. I'll let you on. It's not really a secret anymore because I have it on my website. But at the end of seventh grade, was it sixth grade or seventh grade? At the end of sixth grade, I was the worst trumpet player at our school. Because we had a, I went to a school in Oklahoma. I mean, that ended that, um, that sixth grade year. There were a lot of trumpet players. Actually, it was the first half of my seventh grade year. And there was a lot of trumpet players. And um, I didn't, I was too shy to ask questions. I didn't get private lessons, and so I didn't even know all my fingers. I didn't know even hardly which end of the horn to blow in. And I was also really nervous when it came to playing on the test. So I, I did horrendously bad. I was actually the, like the worst trumpet player at that school in, when I first started out after a couple of years. And the band director had so many other kids to work with that they couldn't help me. So I was kind of in that same boat. So now it's you and I, so we don't have to worry about other people, other instruments. Mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about calling roll, finding out who's here. I don't have to get music and hand out music. It's just you and I. And so today, 
we are going to go over just a few basics. Now, we're not going to do the whole lesson here uh, because I don't know if anybody would watch the full lesson. Um, some people might, but also I don't want to put you under pressure. So um, you may take future lessons, uh, but we're not going to record all of them because, frankly, I remember being a student and that would also put me under pressure. So we're only going to just do a little bit today just to let people in YouTube land um, check out what's going on in a first-time beginner type lesson. And I consider you a, a pretty much a first time beginner because it has been about six years since yes. you were in band. And being that we've established and laid a foundation that you were in band for one year, but you didn't get any individualized attention. So yeah. you're pretty much a beginner. Okay, so we know why you started there. We know why you kind of had to bail out because of sports. But now you're back. Yes. And you're interested in getting back on the horn again. And so before we actually get into just going over some of the basics, uh, what actually prompted you or motivated you to, to think, well, I want to give trumpet another shot? Well, um, in my church, there's a big choir and there's a lot of people, a lot of teenagers play different instruments and there's only two guys that play trumpet and um, they did need an extra, but they asked me because I go to my church, but I was like, well, I don't know how to play trumpet that good. And so I just wanted to get some lessons too you know, say okay. yes to the question. Smart. Shopping. Smart, Julie. That's very, very smart. Just to take a couple lessons can really open up a whole world and make things a lot easier yes. than if you just try to do it yourself and you're not really sure what you're doing. Yes. So yeah, you can save yourself a lot of time, plus get a lot, uh, get better more quickly. So the first thing is, let's just talk about the trumpet and how to hold it. The, the heavy lifting is done with the left hand. So if you want to uh, put your fingers through, these are valve casings here, we have three of them. And then here's the tuning slide, the third tuning slide. If you can put your fingers in um, or around the um, third valve here. Yeah, there you go, like that. Yeah, and the fingers here can just wrap around. That looks good. Okay, so you are you really want to support the weight of the horn. Most horns weigh around two pounds, give or take, with your left hand. The reason, this is your action hand. This is the hand that's going to be helping you making music and playing faster and getting the right notes. So you got your left hand that, uh, looking pretty good right there. Let's see if we get it on camera. There you go. Let me, let me scoot over just a little bit and have you scoot over. So I think, okay, yeah. So you got it. Okay, so you can turn it uh, normal. Now, the right hand. The way I like to do it is I put, I have the thumb come up between the first and second valve casing. So you got one, two, three. So I had the thumb come right into there under the lead pipe. This is the lead pipe here. These are the valves. And I put my thumb between the first and second valve casing and I support it a little bit like that. Yeah, just your thumb. You don't have to put, yeah, there you go, like that. Now here's where a lot of beginners, you can relax, Julie. Here's where a lot of beginners have a problem after that. Because they see this crook here and they think that they have to put their hand, they, they think it just naturally you have to have your pinky go in this crook. Everybody can see that. Now there is a use for that down the road. Number one, when you're playing extremely high or number, or number two, if you have a page turn, you may need to hold the horn, put your pinky in here and hold the horn like this as you turn the page. But for uh, most of our playing, we don't really need this. And so it's very tempting for most beginners to put their pinky there. The reason we don't want to do that is because your pinky, um, your anatomy, your pinky is very tied closely to your, your ring finger, your third finger. If you lock that up, try doing that just on your own right now. You can, you can set the horn down on your lap and uh, yeah, break the horn up a little bit more so it doesn't fall. And then take your left hand and just kind of fold back your, let your, your pinky a little bit like this. Now try wiggling your hand. You should feel a little restriction here. Now let the pinky go and just wiggle your fingers. Less restrictive, right? Yes. And so that's what's going on here. If you put your pinky in here all the time, you're, you won't get the speed on your fingers you eventually will want, but also your plane will become uneven. So for right now, you can just let the pinky float in the air, almost like you're over in England and you're drinking the tea that they drink. Mm -hmm. You know, their pinky will kind of tend to come up like that. Now, the next thing is, where do you put your fingers? Some people use, there's some bad hand positions. Some people use what I call the claw. Like, you know, like in a monster movie, you got the claw, you know, someone's going to claw or something like that. And their hand tends to come up just like that. It's the claw. And their hand is very close to the horn and it just, 
comes out like that, you're not going to be able to play that well that way. The, the second hand, bad hand position is popsicle stick fingers. You know, popsicle sticks, when you eat some ice cream and it's on a stick, well, those popsicle stick fingers, your hands are like so rigid and so, so stiff, and they hang over the valves, and people will play like that. It looks cool when you're doing jazz, and you might see some pros doing it, but in general, it's a bad hand position because you can't have absolute control over the valves when you're like this. You could actually fall off of it. So then, I know you're thinking, Julie, well, what is the hand position that I should be using? I like to use this hand position as the best hand position. I just imagine I sat, down, I sat a Coke can or a Pepsi can or a Dr. Pepper or a glass down. See, imagine that. And I set it down and I leave my hand frozen and my hand comes up just like that. And look at that. Perfect. And if you look carefully, you'll see a backward C. It has a letter. Like this is C, but like for cat, right? Mm -hmm. A backward C is what you'll see in your right hand. It's a, it's a backward C. And so if you're actually looking through your no, down your horn, and if you can see a backward C in your hand, you probably got the hand position right for what we need. Why don't you try it? So remember the left hand supports the, the, the does the heavy lifting, so there you go, supports the weight of the horn. And then bring the hand up just like that, like you, yeah, like you just got done setting down a can of Coke. And there's kind of a curl there. Good, good, Julie. The pinky is good, it's just kind of floating there. Excellent, excellent. And so your fingers just kind of have a, a curl on the valves like that. So they're not this, they're not, they're not over, but they're just kind of naturally there. Okay, so that's our hand position, right? Okay, good. Now you'll probably want to practice that a couple of times at home and then we'll review that at another lesson. I mean, I don't, I'm giving you information overload today as I do every student. So there's things that we're gonna to have to revisit a couple of times just so they become automatic. Just, if you can just remember, freeze your hand like you just got done setting down a can of Coke, tilt it up, thumb goes between the first and second valve casings, you're looking at a backward C, you got it. Now, you probably have noticed that there's only three keys or valves. Some people call them keys, but they're really valves. As opposed to a saxophone, which might have 17 or 18, I forget, something like that. Flute has a lot. Piano has 88. And so a lot of people, when they come to their first lesson, they're very curious as to how come a trumpet only has three little buttons or three little valves, but you can make a lot of notes. Do you happen to have any thoughts or have you thought about that? Have you wondered why that is? Yes, I have wondered why or how we're able to make different notes with just three. Okay, now here here is why trumpet is one of the most challenging, fun, and most difficult instruments on the planet to play. It's not the most, but it's way up there. It's because a lot of the notes are right in here, Julie. <laughs> Um, <laughs> a, lot, a lot of your notes are built right here in your in the what we call the amateur, the muscles that surround your lips. Uh, it's a fancy term um, called amateur, and then you have your lips. It's all kind of one system. The tension and the tightness and the contraction and the relaxation of your amateur uh, influences the frequency and the vibration going through the horn. And so that's where you get a lot of your notes. And then of course the valves allow you to manipulate the frequencies to get other notes. But for example, if I don't press any valves down and just blow, I'm not just gonna get one note, I might get several. You can't do that on a piano. You can't just press one note on a piano and have a bunch of other notes come out. It doesn't work that way. As a result, the reason, you might be wondering, well, why would that make this instrument hard? The reason it is, because that increases your odds you might miss a note. <laughs> I mean, if, if you have, if you're not pressing any valves down, but you could hit a bunch of different notes, that means if you're trying to hit a certain note, let's say a C, but you, if you tensed up a little bit too much, oh man, you just hit the wrong note. Mm -hmm. That's why, that's what attracts some people to trumpet because it's such a challenge. It really is a challenge. The other thing is anytime you make music 
with your breath, there is a challenge because we don't have an unlimited supply of air. We have to breathe, right? Yes. So whether you're singing uh, or playing an instrument like trumpet or flute, uh, when you make uh, music through an instrument with your breath, that also has limitations and also has challenges. Compared to a drummer who could just be talking and drumming away, he could be carrying a conversation, he could be looking around, he could be telling people what to do, he's drumming around like that, or a keyboard player or guitar, they could do that all night long or all day long because they're not using their breath. If you use your breath, there's a certain energy demand and you can actually get tired mm -hmm. when you're constantly holding your breath or exhaling in and out and you're controlling all that. That's part of the challenge of the trumpet. Okay, so now we've established that um, through a matter of tension and release and contraction, you're able to hit different notes without even moving any of the keys. Now, when you move the um, buttons on the trumpet, you're actually lengthening the tubing or shortening the tubing, depending on, on what you do. So if you want to, you can see all the, um, all the, the tubes and the slides through the trumpet, right? Now, if you press all three valves down, you're engaging all of the trumpet, all of the, the, the lead pipe, the slides, everything, all the valves. So the, you're engaging the longest part of the trumpet when you have all three valves down. When you have three valves up like that, you're going through the shorter, shortest amount of tubing. Isn't that interesting? Yes. So, okay, now the moment that you've been waiting for and that a lot of people are wondering about Oh, by the way, did you play any other instruments? I played a little bit of the clarinet. Clarinet. Okay, I'm glad you said that. So, when it comes to clarinet, it, clarinet is not the easiest instrument, but boy, it's a, it's, a ton, ton, it's a ton easier than trumpet. And the reason is, you have two things going for you on clarinet. You've already probably looked at trumpet, and you, then you look, then you, if you're thinking about clarinet when you used to play, the clarinet has a whole bunch of keys on it, right? Yeah. That's number one. But number two... Uh, the clarinet has a wooden a wooden thing right a there. Wooden piece, a little what is that? It's called um, I don't remember. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. It starts with an R. Uh, mm. Reed. A reed. R e e d. Yeah, reed. So the clarinet holds your hand a little bit because the reed vibrates, and you vibrate the reed, and you get the sound. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Us trumpet players don't have. <laughs> We don't have a reed. Mm -hmm. What is our reed? Our lips. And of course, that now that makes life even more difficult. So now on the clarinet, you, you're able just to blow like this. You just blow through it and you're vibrating that reed. And then now you have all these keys to play and push down to get the notes. Now that makes life even that much easier. And then you got your secret, secret, secret weapon on the back where your thumb is. What, you remember that what that was called? No. Octave key. Octave. Yeah. So if you want to go way up in the high range, you don't have to turn red and pass out like on trumpet sometimes. You just blow. Bam. You hit you hit the octave key in the back and you're already an octave higher on the clarinet. On trumpet, we don't have any of that. <laughs> we don't have anything like that. We don't have a reed to help us vibrate the sound out. We don't have all the keys to get all the notes to lock them in. And we don't have an octave key. So that all comes again from our amateur, the muscles here in our lips. So we're putting the we're putting the brunt impact and the physicality of playing this instrument almost all on us, as opposed to say for example on clarinet, the keys, and the reed, the octave key, that makes life a lot easier. So we have to be very efficient about getting a tone on the trumpet, and I'm just going to assume that you've. It's been so long since you had that one year in band that I'm just going to assume that you don't know how to get the tone out. The way I like to do it is, you now you did play volleyball and you did do track. And I, like I mentioned, I did football when I was very young. When you're outside that long, every now and then you'll get something, you'll get a little bit of dust, you'll get a little something on your, on your face or your fingers. And um, you could get just a little bit of dirt or something on your lip. And if you had a little bit of grass or a little bit of dirt that came your way and you want to get it off you would do this <laughs> can you try that just just imagine like a little bit of dirt you're running the, the hundred meters and you stopped and the girl in front of you 
kicked up some dirt and it got on your lip and you went, Pff. try that. Pff. Got it. Try it again. Pff. It's that motion that you're doing right now with your lips and that little bit of vibration. Pff. that gives you the tone on trumpet. That's how we first do it. That way you don't have to think too hard about it. It's just, here's a little bit of dirt or grass on my lips. You try. But first, uh, yeah, let me review the horn. So you're gonna um, put the, do the heavy lifting in your left hand. That takes all the weight out of, out of it for your right hand. The right hand, remember, is just like you, you sat down a can of Coke, but you froze your hand, you tilted it up so you can see a backward C. Your thumb goes between the first and second valve casings and your fingers just curl up naturally on the valves. Your pinky just floats there. And now you got this little, you just finished at 100 meters. There's a little bit of something that some girl in front of you just kicked up on you and a little bit of dust or dirt and you're just <coughs> trying to get it off. You try. Yes. 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 Good. Now to make to actually make the note come out, you would just have to do the same thing you're doing there, Julie, and you're doing a really good job. I mean, just I even thought I heard a couple high notes come out when you did that. So fantastic. Now, of course, to make the note come out, you have to uh, inject a little bit of air from your lungs. So if you, in other words, you would want to have your your lungs filled up. Yes, excellent. Do it again. That was fantastic. Yes. Hey. Okay, put the horn down. High five. Some people can't get a note on their first lesson. I mean, you could stand them on their head and they still can't get it. You did. Good job, Julie. Fantastic. I even heard a couple high notes in there for at least for as far as beginners. So that you already have some natural talent. And a natural amateur um, setup here. I believe you could probably even go above the staff today if we really worked on it. We're not going to take the whole lesson um, to go over everything, but who knows? Maybe after the camera clicks off, I'll I'll see if I can get you up there, maybe around E's or G's. Now, you may have thought, well, I try to get one note, but then it dropped down to the low C because you were kind of up around there. But when you settle on the note, it came down to the low C. Now, the more relaxed your lips are, the lower you're going to get and the more out of control you're going to be. Look at, look at that relaxed. If I tighten them up, I'm going to be in a lot more control and I can actually go higher or lower depending on what I want to do. So your assignment for this first week is just to be noticing when you do try to get the note, what's going on with your cheeks and what we call the corners. These are called your corners here. You want these to be somewhat contracted so that when you blow, you don't do this. Can you see what's going on there? Mm -hmm. My cheeks are uh, mm -hmm. blowing out, right? Yes. Now, you, I know you might have seen some famous trumpet players do that, but most don't. And the best trumpet players lock that in because you can build more muscle and end up getting a better range on your on your trumpet. Range meaning high or low. That was a double pedal C way in the basement versus the high C. So if you lock this in and be conscious of contracting the corners and not letting your cheeks blow out, you'll end up doing a lot better on the trumpet. I want you to try everything again, but right before you blow, I want you to think about kind of making your corners a little bit tighter here. And tighter is not always the best word, but maybe more contracted. You just don't, you want to try to avoid this, <laughs> where your cheeks just blow out. So you want to see if maybe you can kind of just keep them a little bit more rigid, more contracted. You try. So as you pick it up, I'm going to review stuff with you. You got the, you got, you're bearing the brunt of the weight in your left hand. Your right hand's coming up, looking good, Julie. Very good, picture perfect. And then remember, you're getting that dirt off your dip. And then you're going to try to keep. There we go. Hey, that's good. you just hit 
two notes. You hit a second line G, and then you went down to low C. It already worked, right? Yes. <laughs> you notice a difference, right? Yes. Just, I mean, then you're just starting this. So now, let's talk about another thing. Okay, your lips. Your lips can do a lot of different things when you're playing. They, you can pout them out like that, or you can almost make them disappear. Right, you see almost all my lips disappear. In the beginning, you want to find kind of a happy middle ground. You don't, I noticed your lips were more like this. Now, for playing super duper low notes, that could come in handy. But we want to roll them in a little bit. So look at my lips. I'm rolling out, here's roll out. So I may use a term that doesn't actually jive with the definition, but my lips are actually pooched out, powdered out, rolled out like this. Now we don't exactly want that in the beginning. There's a time and place for that, but for right now we want to roll them in. Watch my lips roll in or curl in. Curl is a good is a curl. A curl is a good term. So watch. Could you see me bring them in a little bit? Yes. Now I want you to try playing again, but this time now you're focusing on a couple different things. Your hand the kind of getting that dirt off your lip, making sure you have some air. And we'll talk a lot more about air in future lessons, but for right now, I don't want to overload you too much. And then you're gonna make sure that your lips don't go, I mean, your cheeks don't do this. So you're trying to contain here. But now the last thing I want you to think about are your lips. So you don't want your lips like, it's not a big pucker like you're trying to kiss or you just bit into a lemon. You want to roll them in. So you try. You're rolling your lips. There we go. There we go. Whoa, that was good. Hey, <laughs> two thumbs up. You just hit a high E. You hit, um, you hit um, C and then you touched on the E just by doing that. High five again, Julie. Awesome. That is really awesome. How many of you beginners out there can hit a high, high E like Julie just did? I would say almost none of you can. That is really awesome. You got some natural talent, Julie, <laughs> some natural strength. And this is only our first lesson. Yes. I mean, just I know this is all new. Just imagine when it's not all new and you're getting very comfortable. It's possible you could be hitting a high C in a couple of months from now. You, I can just see that you, you kind of have the natural ability. Okay, so we learned several different things today. Julie, you learned about holding the hand, holding the horn in your left hand, about the right hand position where it's supposed to go, about getting the jump start on your lip buzz, um, a little bit of breathing, how to contain your cheeks so they don't puff out, and then how to roll on your lips. And I think we're gonna leave it at that today for our first lesson. Fantastic, I mean, you got, I heard the E come out, that's the E at the top of the treble clef staff, that is awesome. So, Julie, I really appreciate your generosity and your willingness to get in front of the camera. And like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, uh, most of my students tend to be men, males, boys, teenagers. Every so often, like 1% or less, I'll get a female student. I'm really excited about that because I am trying to make the world a better place as far as the musical world for women, for ladies, for girls, um, on this instrument. And the reason I mention that is, well, it's not a mystery. If you look around or if you ever go to a concert, you tend, you tend to just see guys playing this instrument. Every now and then you will see women, girls, ladies, I, I use all those terms because I've actually been slapped a few times if I say girl, someone will say, well, why don't you say woman? So mm -hmm. anyway, you, the point is female. So. When you, when you look at um, a lot of different ensembles, and when you see the trumpet section, doggone it, almost always you see guys. And um, not that that's bad, but I think that women can do just as good as guys, or maybe even better, if given the chance. And let me ask you, uh, I remember you telling me that your heritage, heritage is Mexican, right? Yes. Okay. Now, what I know about Mexico is that they have an ensemble that's like a national ensemble that plays at a lot of different events. They play birthdays, they play special holidays in Mexico, 
they'll come to funerals, they'll do 50 year um, a marriage um, celeb uh, anniversaries. And that group is a group of trumpet players, different guitar players, some real big guitar players, some singers, sometimes violin. You know what kind of group I'm talking about? Yes, they're called mariachi. Mariachi, yeah. that's right. Now, I think the, the same holds true in, in uh, Mexico and um, South American cultures. When you look at the mariachi group, now there could be an exception to this, but if you look at the trumpet section in mariachi groups, are they mostly men? Are they mostly women? Or what have you noticed? I've noticed that there's a couple of women in the uh, mariachi group. A couple? Yeah. But in on average, if you were to look at 10 different mariachi groups, what would you say as far as the trumpet section goes? Um, oh, the trumpet section, not too many women. Just about two. Just about two? Yeah. That's what I've seen too. Mm -hmm. Now, don't get me wrong. When I've seen a, a whole mariachi ensemble, I have seen on almost everyone, there's women in there. They're singing. Um, I've seen several women play an awesome violin, mm -hmm. right? Um, I think I may have seen a woman doing a guitar before. Uh, but when it comes to the trumpet section, doggone it, it seems like I almost always see males, see men. Yes. I mean, maybe, I don't know, maybe every now and then. So the, this, it seems to be a worldwide phenomenon when it comes to this instrument. Maybe because it's loud and that kind of could be part of it. It's, it's loud and it, it's, it could be a little bit obnoxious. Um, it's not delicate like a flute. It's not delicate like a violin. So that could be part of it. But I think, and I don't know if you think this, but couldn't a, couldn't a woman step into a mariachi ensemble and play trumpet and do just as good as a guy? Yes, I think the trumpet is not only for women. I think, I mean for men, mm -hmm. excuse me. Um, women should should play trumpet. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, why why can't a woman get or a female get into a mariachi group and totally kick butt? Yeah. <laughs> why not? I, I don't see any reason why they couldn't. But all men and women have one challenge. One challenge, at the very least, when it comes to this instrument, and it is the physical part, strength. Mm -hmm. Strength separates the really good trumpet players and the ones that are not so good. Both women and men, in my estimation, can build up the same amount of strength here. We both have the same, you don't have any different muscles up here than I do. It's just a matter of building them the right way. That's the key. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this one up, like I mentioned a couple of minutes ago. But Julie, just in case um, you had any few parting words um, about getting started back on trumpet and then maybe playing in your church and then our and then our lesson here i mean if you had anything that you'd like to say well um thank you for your, having the patience and teaching me a couple of steps on using this trumpet and i think women should start um getting more into music and playing the instrument they really want to play i 100 percent concur and agree with what you just said julie so it's my pleasure to have you in the first lesson Hope to see you in many more, but we're not going to put you under the gun or under pressure of recording every lesson. Mm -hmm. uh, this was just a special occasion, so I appreciate your willingness to be flexible and just allow um, people, you know, I have a lot of people on my channel on social media, just allow them to see uh, me interacting with a, a female trumpet student and a beginning trumpet student at that. So thanks, Julie, for being here. Everybody else, hope you enjoyed this, and I'm sure that this lesson here will generate an interesting dialogue so please you leave your comments in the comment section below don't forget about going to trumpetsizzle.com i'm kurt thompson and i'll see you in the next one
Thank mm-hmm. you.